Welcome to the BD Max System Training. In this program, you'll learn all the basics of running samples through the BD Max system and reviewing the results. The program is organized into nine chapters, shown here. By the end of the video, you'll be familiar with the instrument components, its operation, how to analyze and export data, and some basic maintenance procedures as well. Let's get started. The BD Max system for molecular diagnostics fully automates cell lysis, nucleic acid extraction, PCR setup, target amplification and detection from a variety of specimen types. It can provide up to 24 patient results in about three hours. Individual assay times can vary. The BD Max system can process a broad menu of IVD assays, including HAIs, GI, respiratory, women's health and cancer, and sexually transmitted diseases. The BD Max system can also handle open system assays for lab developed tests. The BD Max system consists of the BD Max instrument itself, its peripheral components, and the reagents. In this section, we'll concentrate on the instrument and peripherals. Let's start with the peripherals. The all in one touchscreen computer is the control center for the BD Max system. It includes the software for running and calibrating the instrument, as well as data analysis and storage. The monitor displays instrument and run status at any moment. The computer includes an integrated hard drive for storing the operating system, the BD Max system application, and the run data and results. External ports and connections are easy to access. There's a keyboard and mouse for manual data entry and navigation, as well as a handheld barcode scanner for specimen tracking and rapid data entry. The only sample racks the instrument will accept are BD Max system sample racks. Each rack holds up to 12 samples and the reagents needed to test them. The system includes four of these racks as well as an optional pre warm heater and rack. The BD Max system will accept up to two racks for each run. Now, let's turn to the BD Max system itself. The power switch is on the right side of the instrument. When the power is on, the switch will light up green. Below the switch, just above the power cord, is a plate with the instrument serial number. On the left side of the body is a panel with USB ports, including a Type-B port to connect the all-in-one touchscreen. The all-in-one touchscreen computer is the control center for the BD Max system. The door can only be locked and unlocked using the BD Max system software. When unlocked, you can open it by grasping the handle, pushing down gently, and then sliding the door upward. Close the door by sliding it back down. When powered on, the instrument interior is illuminated. Under normal operations, the instrument light will be blue and indicates there are no active alerts. A flashing red instrument light indicates there are active or unacknowledged alerts that need your attention. The sample racks are placed on either side of the interior. The centerpiece is the robotic head, the workhorse of the BD Max system. When at rest, the robotic arm sits at the middle rear of the instrument interior. The robotic head uses a pipette head to transfer fluids. The barcode reader attached to the pipette head reads sample and reagent barcodes during operations. The BD Max IVD assay kits display the assay name and reference number on the front and side of the box. The expiration date, lot number, and storage conditions are also shown on the front of the box. For ease of scanning, lot number barcodes are on two sides of the kit. A BD Max IVD assay kit includes 24 tests and all required reagents, including unitized reagent strips, extraction reagent tubes, master mixes, sample buffer tubes, and septum caps. The unitized reagent strip includes assay specific reagents, pipette tips, and vessels for mixing and waste. It consists of the reaction tube in four snap-in locations. The snap-in nearest the reaction tube is snap-in 1. Snap-in positions 2, 3, and 4 continue toward the extraction buffers. There is a wash buffer, elution buffer, neutralization buffer, a waste tube, two 1 milliliter pipette tips, and two 175 microliter pipette tips. The extraction reagent tubes are in two resealable pouches and contain DNA magnetic affinity beads, protease reagents, and sample processing control. It is placed in snap-in position 1. 
The master mix tubes also come in two resealable pouches and contain DNA polymerase, nucleotides, and assay-specific molecular primers and probes, along with sample processing control-specific primers and probes. Single master mix tubes are placed in snap-in position 2. If a second master mix is required, it is placed in position 4. Septum caps are provided to recap prepared patient samples when ready for testing. The PCR cartridge has 24 self-contained chambers for the PCR amplification and detection, 12 chambers on the bottom, and 12 on the top. It's the same cartridge the BDMAX system uses for all assays. The all-in-one computer interface of the BDMAX system allows you to run samples and generate results. Here's how it works. The status screen is the default screen a user sees when not logged in. Log in by pressing the button in the lower left. Then, provide your username and password. Remember, the password is case sensitive. Different user profiles can be created. The default username and password are both admin. Once you're logged in, you can navigate the all-in-one interface and operate the BDMAX system. The default screen is the status display. The status bar is at the top of every display and instantly shows you critical information. The alerts button shows you active and recent alerts so you can respond as needed. When there are active alerts, the alerts icon will flash. Click it to open the alerts window. Any unresolved alerts will be listed with pertinent information about the incident. Dynamic icons display the robot, rack, and reader status for sample racks A and B, PCR readers A and B, and the robotic pipetter. The rack icon may be level, tilted to the left, tilted to the right, or grayed out if no rack is present in the instrument. When the robot or reader is active, moving arrows encircle the icon. In this example, the robot and the PCR is active. External device icons show the status of the pre-warm heater, LIS, and USB ports. If the icon appears, the device is properly configured. A red exclamation mark means there's a problem with the device. Date and time are shown to the right of the external device statuses. The instrument number and current user are shown below the date and time. The Help button allows you to pull up the user's manual whenever you need it. The menu bar at the bottom of every display allows you to turn off the computer, log in or out, display the on-screen keyboard, unlock the door, start a run, or access the Run, Status, Results, Configuration, Reports, or Maintenance displays. Here's how you shut down the BD Mac system and the all-in-one computer. First, click on the BD logo at the bottom of the menu bar. Click the Shutdown button in the Shutdown or Restart window. This will initiate an orderly shutdown or restart of the BD Mac system user interface. During shutdown, the all-in-one computer will power off. The user must manually turn off the BDMAX system instrument. Selecting the keyboard button displays the on-screen keyboard. You can close it by pressing the X in the upper right corner. The Run tab has four secondary tabs. Work List, PCR Only, Test Editor, and Inventory. The Work List tab under 2000 Sample Configuration allows you to enter up to 2000 samples. Sample information is saved in a pending state until tubes are scanned in the instrument during catalog check. Sample data can also be downloaded to the work list from a LIS or laboratory information system if one is configured. Samples sent from a LIS must have an accession number and test. The accession or test must be attached to a sample tube barcode before being placed on the instrument for testing. Samples are removed from the work list when catalog check completes successfully for a tube that is loaded in a sample rack and run on the instrument. If using open system functionality, the test editor display provides tabs that allow you to view, define, and modify user-defined protocols, or UDP. Refer to the specific reagent package insert for additional information. The status display shows run status in a dynamic graphic display. Timers appear for the PCR and sample preparation and pre-warm stages. Consumables become shaded green to indicate successful catalog check. Progress bars indicate general progress of various operations, and status messages appear in relevant areas of the display. The BDMAX system arrives with all parameters preset to factory default values. 
However, before using the instrument for sample testing, you should review the setup parameters to see if they are suitable for your laboratory. Configuration tabs include users, assays, system, and external devices. The Users display enables you to add, modify, and delete users and user groups. By default, there are two predefined user groups, admin and lab tech. You can define additional groups and set permissions for various instrument or system functions. The assays display allows you to import new and updated assays provided by BD and to delete existing assays if desired. New and updated assay definitions should be saved to USB thumb drives. The system display allows you to customize a variety of instrument settings such as patient identifier fields, printers, and language. It should be configured at installation. The external devices display lets you set parameters for the pre-warm heater and laboratory information system configuration. The Reports tab is where you'll find all reports that are not the run reports. The Positivity Rate report shows the rate of positive samples for a particular test. The Quality Control report displays the results of the positive and negative external controls over time by test. Reports can be printed or exported. You can then configure the report based on a variety of parameters, including test, interval, and start or end date. The Maintenance tab provides several utilities for viewing instrument events and errors, and for maintaining data within the secondary tabs. The Versions display is where you can find the instrument software version and serial number. The Event display shows a list of alerts and activities. The Block Lanes display enables you to block one or more lanes from testing. It still allows runs to continue until repairs are made that would allow the lanes to be unblocked. The Tasks display enables you to perform several instrument functions, including Backup and Restore Database, Backup Log, Home All Motors, and Manage Housekeeping Tasks. In this section, we'll show you how to prepare and perform a run, including how to set up your racks. First, navigate to the Run Inventory tab on the All-in-One interface. Then, enter the kit reagent lot numbers. For each lot of consumables that you want to track, click in the Enter Kit Barcode field and scan the customer barcode on the reagent kit. The item name, item type, lot number, and expires fields are automatically populated with information for that reagent lot. The Date Entered field automatically populates with the current date. Click the Active checkbox to make the kit active for use on the work list display. Click the Save button to save the lot information, or click Clear to reset the fields. To add samples to the work list, navigate to the Run Work List tab. Select the tests or tests by clicking the Test drop-down field to select the desired assay name. Only predefined tests appear in this list. This field is mandatory to save a sample. The selected test remains selected until another one is chosen from the test field. Click the Kit Lot Number field and select the lot number from the drop-down list. Lot numbers must be defined in the inventory display before they can be selected here. Lot information appears in reports when it is entered on the work list. Enter the sample buffer tube ID, patient ID, and a session number, if applicable, into the work list, either by scanning the barcode with the scanner or by manual entry. Some assays require a pre-warm step before being processed. If required, refer to the user's manual for further instructions. You can also review Chapter 9, Other Tools, in this program. When ready to use, peel off the top plastic film and leave the box inside. Remove a unitized reagent strip by holding the tab and lifting it straight out of the box. Gently tap the unitized reagent strip on the table or surface to ensure all the liquids are in the bottom of the tubes. Then, place it into the rack with the barcode facing you. For each sample to be tested, place one unitized reagent strip on the BD Max system rack. Once your unitized reagent strips are in place, starting from the back, just push the strips into place. You can hear it snap or pop. To make sure reagent strips are seated properly, give a slight pull on these tabs to test them. Pull out your extraction and master mix pouch. These packages are resealable and come with a desiccant pack. Please keep the desiccant pack in the pouch if you are not using all of the consumables. The extraction tube has a white foil label with a tiny identification barcode. 
There are also small black pellets that are the extraction beads and other reagents. Snap one extraction tube into each unitized reagent strip in position one, which is marked by a white label. Then take the master mix out, which has a green foil label and has all the enzymes and probes. Snap one master mix tube into each unitized reagent strip in position two, which is marked by the green label. You can see that the colored stripes on the rack line up with the colors on the snap-ins. The white stripe lines up with the extraction tube, the green stripe with Master Mix 1, and the blue stripe with Master Mix 2. The assays without a Master Mix 2 will have an open hole. Now you can see your unitized reagent strips are all secured into place. Your extraction and master mix snap-ins are seated properly. Slide and rotate the latch mechanism open. Place the prepared sample buffer tubes into the BDMAX sample rack corresponding to the unitized reagent strips assembled. Slide the latch back into the closed position. If you haven't already done so, click or tap the unlock door, which will allow you access to the BDMAX system. Position sample rack A on the left side and sample rack B on the right side of the instrument. The sample rack has four pegs, one on each corner to guide and secure the rack in place. Use both hands to hold the racks by the handle. When the rack is in position, lower the handle to lock it in place. You'll know your sample rack is seated properly if you can put your handle down without resistance and the rack doesn't wobble. Your tubes will face opposite you. BDMAX PCR cartridges can be used multiple times to maximize their usage, up to 24 lanes. Place an unused or partially used BDMAX PCR cartridge into the cartridge drawer. Handle the PCR cartridge only by the edges to ensure that dirt or debris does not interfere with processing. Position the notched edge into the upper left corner of the drawer. Make sure the PCR cartridge is positioned correctly and fits snugly on the drawer. The BDMAX system will automatically select the position and row on the BDMAX PCR cartridge for each run. Each rack needs one PCR cartridge to complete a run. Remember, the drawer closes automatically. Don't try to close the PCR cartridge drawer manually. Before beginning a run, make sure the door of the BDMAX system is closed. Then, click the Start button in the menu bar. When prompted, you can enter an optional name for the run. When a run is started, a catalog check is performed to scan the barcodes of all samples and consumables to verify that they are the correct type, are not expired, and for some consumables, are eligible for use. If a lane in a PCR cartridge has previously been used, a slash mark appears in that lane. As each item successfully passes the catalog check, a green passed icon appears for that consumable. If an item fails the catalog check, a red alert icon appears for that consumable. When you click on the alert icon, a brief description of the problem appears at the bottom of the display. Catalog errors must be corrected before the run can proceed or a new work list can be created. As the run progresses, countdown timers appear showing the time remaining to complete major operations. A sample preparation timer labeled prep time remaining appears between the two racks. If applicable, a pre-warm timer appears between the two cartridges. A timer for time to result, which includes all full process operations, appears between the two cartridges. Above each timer, the run ID and status messages appear within the timer pane. When the corresponding operation has successfully completed, a checkered flag appears in the timer circle, indicating the process has been completed. As a run progresses, status messages appear in light blue shaded bars within the timers and at the top of the rack banks. If you want to increase throughput of the BDMAX system and maximize efficiency, you can perform an interleaved run. While one run is in PCR cycling, the next run can begin sample preparation. The unlock door button becomes enabled on the work list display. Once the first batch of samples has progressed to a point where the last sample has begun PCR cycling within the instrument, the status of the robot is idle, and PCR is in progress. To start the second run, unlock the instrument door by clicking the Unlock Door button. Then open the door and remove the rack or racks from the first run. Enter the information for the second run into the work list if needed. 
Load the racks containing the sample buffer tubes, reagents, and unitized reagent strips for the second run into the instrument. Close the door again and click the Start button. Since the cartridge has been used previously, the instrument determines whether there are available lanes for this run based on sample locations. If there are available lanes in the top row, the BDMAX system uses the top row. If not, it checks the bottom row. If there are no lanes available in either row for the current sample locations, the drawers containing the PCR cartridges move to the out position. A message will display a request to change the cartridge. A timer counts down the hour in which the cartridge can be changed, and the unlock door button is enabled. Click the unlock door button and open the door. Then, remove the used cartridges from the instrument and dispose them as legal and institutional guidelines require. Do not remove the racks at this time. Place new cartridges into the drawers. Then, close the door to complete cartridge loading of the second run. Click the OK button in the message box to continue. When a run is complete, you can view, print, and download the results as well as export plots to a USB thumb drive in the results display. If desired, results can be searched and filtered. Enter the variables you want to search in the appropriate field or fields in the Search Criteria window at the right of the display. When a run is selected, you can perform a variety of actions. The export operation exports results to a CSV file and copies a PDF file of the current run report. To view run results, double-click the desired run on the list display. A new button appears above the menu bar, labeled with the run number. For example, Run X, where X signifies the run number. You can also open two or three runs in the same run window. Click the Run button to open the Run Details display. You can open multiple Run Details displays and scroll through the list with the navigation buttons at the bottom left of the display. To print the results, click the Print button. The Print Preview window of the Run Report appears. The run report contains a table of detailed results and PCR graphs. To print the report to the default printer, click the Print button in the Print window. To export the report to a USB thumb drive, click the Export button. The Export operation exports results to a PDF file of the current run report. Copy Run will copy the samples logged in for that run back into the work list. The Details tab appears by default when a run is displayed. The plotting display allows you to view PCR curves for past runs. By default, only the channels used in the test are shown, and all positions are shown. Use the position color checkboxes and the reader A or B checkboxes to view and hide specific positions. The color of the position checkbox when filled corresponds to the curve's color in the graph. To keep the BDMAX system operating at peak efficiency and ensure a long life, you should observe a strict daily and weekly cleaning and maintenance regimen, remembering that sample racks should be cleaned between each run. Be careful not to touch the glass surfaces of the cartridge drawers. If any foreign objects, dust, or dirt are discovered on these surfaces, review the user's manual for proper cleaning procedures. It's also recommended that you place unused PCR cartridges in the cartridge drawers when cleaning. Finally, take care to protect the glass surfaces from any accidental splattering of abrasive or corrosive cleaning agents. First, let's go over the procedures you should follow every day. Dampen a lint-free cloth with the recommended solution. Use it to wipe down the sample racks, laboratory work surfaces, and ancillary items such as pipetters, vortex, tube racks, etc. It is recommended that you clean external BD Max system surfaces before the internal surfaces. Weekly maintenance includes all of the steps of daily cleaning, with the addition of cleaning the monitor, inspecting the cartridge drawer, and cycling power.
use proper personal protective equipment, and follow safety guidelines. The handheld barcode scanner has a clear window through which the scanner beam passes. If the scanner is giving read errors when attempting to scan, you can try cleaning the scanner window. To clean the window, use a lint-free, non-abrasive cloth dampened with water. Your BDMAX system has some other tools you should be aware of. In this section, we'll look at two of them, the Run Wizard and the Pre-Warm Process. The Run Wizard allows you to try different rack configurations before attempting a run. When you select different Run Wizard tabs, the display updates dynamically and reflects information you have entered. When selected, the Run Wizard window opens. There are five tabs on the right side of the screen to help you configure the sample racks, scan cartridge, select tests, view racks list, view racks diagram, compatibility. The scan cartridge tab lets you scan the PCR cartridge barcode to see which lanes on the cartridge are unused. Cartridges A and B are graphically shown on the bottom of the window. The currently selected cartridge appears in color. The cartridge that is not selected is grayed out and blurred. Any blocked lanes are shaded in gray. Used lanes are shown with a diagonal slash through them. You can select cartridge side A or B and top or bottom rows when scanning in a cartridge into the cartridge barcode field. You can also choose the barcode of the cartridge currently in use in the cartridge A or B barcode field. When you enter the wizard, the first window that appears is the Select Test tab. This tab enables you to specify assay and number of samples. Select a test from the drop-down menu to add that test to the run. Increase the number of samples in the run by typing into the field or with the plus or minus buttons. Tests can be removed with the Remove button. Only tests compatible with those currently in the run will be available in the drop-down menu. The View Racks Diagram tab is a read-only window showing the current lane assignments of racks A and B. The tests shown are suggested based on the information entered in the Select Test tab. The Time Estimates pane appears at the top of the View Racks List tab. It provides an estimate for the sample preparation time, which is also when you can start the next interleaved run, and the time to results. These estimates are based on the average time to complete the number of samples of each test specified in the Select Test tab. These panes show suggested positions for the samples added in the Select Test tab, as well as any blocked lanes. The numbers of the block lanes are highlighted with a gray bar. Lane numbers appear in the lane column. The test column contains one of the following values. Blocked, if the lane is blocked. Assay name, if the lane is used for a sample. Empty, if the lane is neither blocked nor used for a sample. Or not available, if the lane has been used already. The system suggests locations to optimize the use of rack space based on assay compatibility. The View Racks Diagram tab is a read-only window showing the current lane assignments of racks A and B. The information displayed in the View Racks Diagram tab is the same as that in the View Racks list but shown graphically. The Compatibility tab is a read-only window showing the rack and run compatibility of all assay types. A large box encloses assay types that are run compatible. Smaller box or boxes enclose assay types in the same rack that are compatible and can be used in a given run. Some assays require a pre-warm step before being processed. Creating a pre-warm run is similar to creating a full process run. To schedule a sample for pre-warm, first scan the sample buffer tube to highlight the sample in the work list if it hasn't already been selected. Next, check the box in the schedule column for the desired sample. Scheduled will appear in the pre-warm column once the sample has been scheduled. Then, place the sample tube into the pre-warm rack. Make sure the BD pre-warm heater is connected. The Start Pre-warm button will be enabled when the BD pre-warm heater is connected and ready to heat, and the pre-warm rack is in place. To start a pre-warm run, Place the pre-warm rack with the scheduled sample tubes into the BD pre-warm heater. Select Start Pre-warm to begin the pre-warm run. Check the pre-warm status for the sample by viewing the pre-warm column. It may display initializing at first. During the heating and cooling cycle, in progress will be displayed. Monitor the time remaining for completion of the pre-warm run by viewing the pre-warm timer on the status screen. When the pre-warm run has completed, the pre-warm column will display complete. 
The pre-warmed sample is already logged into the work list and can now be run on the BDMAX instrument for the selected assay or test. We hope this program has helped familiarize you with some of the features and capabilities of your BDMAX system. If you have any additional questions, please consult the package insert, user's manuals, or your BD representative.